By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Enrico from Italy, Venice, and he has brought a zoo deck to the table and he's called it Greta's Zoo. And why that is, I'm going to explain that in the deck deck that's coming up in a moment. And I myself am playing with an Ecation Infantry deck, which consists only out of cards of Fallen Empires. Yes, you've heard that right. It's a complete 100% Fallen Empires deck. Um, if you'd like to go straight to the games, like always, you can click on the timestamp in the description below. That will take you straight to game number one. And here we are going to start with the deck decks by looking at both of the uh, deck pictures of today's matchup. And here we see the zoo deck that Enrico is playing today. And we see some lovely creatures. They all have a casting cost of one. So obviously this is a very quick deck. And then we see a few X spells, like of course the hurricanes, which are going to be useful because he only has ground creatures. So he's playing with Savannah Lions, Kurt Ape, uh, Timberwolves and Tundra Wolves. Really cool. So he's got a little wolf collection going on there. He's playing with the giant grove, which of course is showing a, a giant rat. So that's also an animal. So it's really, it's, he's really got the theme in here. And he was telling me, you know, I've kind of, he sees this as the Greta deck because he's playing a wizard that gets all his power from the environment. So he's playing with creatures that he commands. He's playing with giant groves. He's playing, of course, with hurricanes so he can make a storm. He's playing with lightning bolts. So I find that, you know, it's very flavorful. Regrowth, of course, is also a thing that refers to being a wizard that controls uh, the environment. So I think that's where the name Greta comes from and he's going to duel against my deck and my deck is full of humans. Let's take a look uh, at my brew and see if I stand a chance against this zoo deck. And this is the deck that I am playing with today. So as you can see, it's 100% Fallen Empires. And what I wanted to do, I just wanted to play with all the occasion cards. I thought, I just like that sub theme. I like the tribal uh, theme of Fallen Empires and I wanted to make a tribal deck. So here we see the occasion Javelineers, occasion Infantry, occasion Townsfolk, occasion Phalanx, occasion Lieutenant, occasion Money Changer. Uh, we see the priest, uh, we see Hand of Justice, of course, which I always envision him of being uh, the judge in the occasion town itself. And, and those two cards go so well together. It's like an auto combo. Um, so this card, this deck has speed because it has a lot of cheap soldiers that I can cast, uh, you know, Order of Light, Burr, Occasion Javelineers, but it also has a mid game with Hand of Justice with Occasion Town. And I, I'm also really curious to see if Ring of Renewal will function in this deck. Because my idea was at a certain point, I've played out all my smaller creatures and my hand's going to be really light, maybe even empty. And I can use my Ring of Renewal to just get new cards in my hand. Uh, also, the conch, conch Horn is in the deck for that reason. Obviously, you need for um, a Yoli Pile or however you pronounce that. I've, I, I'm, I just don't know how to, but you need that card to just deal some direct damage and have a little bit of creature removal uh, in the deck, which is usually not a problem for white having creature removal, but I've limited myself to only using cards from Fallen Empires and in Fallen Empires removal is a really difficult thing to find. So I'm really curious to see if this deck can actually hold up with basically any other deck. So we're just going to see how it's going to perform against Greta's Zoo. So without further ado, <laughs> let's, let's go to game one. Game number one, I'm sitting on the left with my Ecasian human deck and my opponent Enrico is sitting on the right, I believe Enrico's on the play and look at that, he's taking a mulligan and this is actually his second mulligan. So that means he has to, he can draw a fresh seven, but then needs to put two cards on the bottom of his library. So that is pretty rough here for my opponent Enrico. And let's take a look, so drawing seven, now he has to put two on the bottom of his library. And that's always hard to choose. Putting two there on the bottom, let's see. And starting here with a Taiga into a Kurdape, classic opening. That means he has a two, three for one mana. That's pretty powerful stuff from his side, especially against my deck. My deck. Let's see what I can do. Do I also have a one drop? Okay, it looks like I've got the ruins of, I think, Troik here. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but this is one of those sack lands from um, Fallen Empire, it comes into play tapped and I can untap it and I can tap it for one white or I can tap and sack it for two white. Um, in the meanwhile, Enrico has played a Savannah Lines with that City of Brass. So that means he's got five, uh, four power now on the board. He can already attack with the Kurt Ape, 
bringing me down to 18. And that's exactly what it's going to do. So I'm on 18 and he's passing turn. I'm tapping my ruins here. That means I've got three mana to my disposal if I want to. Playing the Ecasian Javelineers and playing the Ecasian Infantry. Now Ecasian Infantry is a 1-1 one, one, and I can pay one to give it first strike. And I can also pay one to give it banding. Now obviously I don't have any mana left at this point. So I'm just taking the damage. Those Ecasian Javelineers, they do look really good as a tool to kill the Savannah Alliance. So it's going to be interesting to see how I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to pay two. Am I going to play? Okay, I'm going to play a IO pile. And that's an artifact from Fallen Empires of, as well, of course. And there's a quick disenchant. And what I'm doing now, I'm sacking the IO pile to deal two damage to the, to the Kurt Ape and then one more damage with my Javelinier. That means the Kurt Ape dies. And Savannah Alliance is not a huge uh, threat for me. And this is the last card by Enrico using a regrowth to get back the Kurt Ape. So, I mean, he's still a slight favorite if we look at what he has on the board. But remember, his hand is now empty. And uh, he's asking what the Cajun Infantry does again. Of course, I have no mana left or else I could have given it first strike and I could have killed the Savannah Alliance. But I need mana to do that. So I have an Ecasian Javelinier now without a counter on it, and I have that Ecasian Infantry. Tapping two, this is interesting because there's an Order of Light Burst. So if he attacks with the Kurt Ape, I can choose to, um, to band it together with Order of Light Burst and Ecasian Infantry. Actually, when the interesting thing here with banding is when you're banding as a defender, I can pay one for band and I can put all my creatures in a band. So if one of my creatures, when I'm the defending player, has banding, I can band all my creatures together and I can um, I can decide how I want to, where I want the damage to go to. So that's probably what I'm going to do here. When I'm attacking, I can only band my banner with one other creature. So it's a different situation. I'm actually sacking this. This is interesting. Oh, this is interesting. Now I remember what I'm doing. I was sacking my sack land for two white and I gave first strike to my Ecagian Infantry and to my Order of Light Bird, blocking it with three first strike damage, killing the uh, Kurt Ape. And then I uh, blocked my Ecagian Javelinier on the Savannah Lines. Uh, so yeah, interesting, interesting move here. And playing... A priest and the priest is one white and for two white and one it can give plus one plus one to another creature so I believe it's called the Ecasian priest and and now it's difficult because of course Enrico only started with five cards in hand and and that's going to be difficult for him now only having one creature on the board it has first strike but all my creatures um, most of my creatures can have first strike as well so he's choosing to Oh, I'm actually giving it plus one plus one with the priests here. That means my order of light bear is becoming a three two and is actually surviving this block with the tundra wolves. And that's the interesting thing about this this fallen empire. I don't know if you've played fallen empire, but especially when you're playing with white, there are so many cards that you can kind of um, that you can kind of pay mana for and then do something. And of course the cost is steep because I have to pay three mana with the priest to give target creature plus one plus one. But if you're in an environment where there's a lot of combat action going on, the tricks are actually quite powerful. But again, that's an important um, that that's an, that's an in, in, important thing. And you do need to be um, in a magic game where there's a lot of combat going on. Because if there's not a lot of combat action going on, the tricks are actually not that useful. In the meanwhile, I'm playing out an Elvish Liar. And the cool thing here is I can sack the, li the, the Elvish Liar for, to give plus two, plus two to a creature. So it's like a mini Giant Grove. Uh, attacking in the meanwhile with both of my creatures. And Enrico is not blocking, of course, because he can sack the uh, Elvish Liar to give plus two, plus two to a creature, killing his Kurt Ape. Instead, he's attacking with his Kurt Ape. So I'm on 12 now, paying three more. And that's interesting. That's a um, Zealot's Mantle. And what it does is if I attack, I can choose not to deal any damage to my opponent. Instead, I can deal X damage to target creature of my opponent, where X is the power of, um, of the creature plus two from the Mantle. So in this case, I can deal three damage to the Kurt Ape, kill the Kurt Ape. I deal one damage with my Priest, who's going to 10. 
And wow, it looks like Enrico is going to have some real trouble getting back in the game here. Um, he has no creatures, no non-land permanents. And I've got tons of creatures. I can use my Zelon sword to give plus two plus O to a creature. I'm giving my Ecasian infantry plus two plus O, meaning I can swing in here for four damage, playing another Ecasian infantry and passing turn. And this is really difficult for my opponent Enrico here. And I think this, I mean, you can all relate this back to his start, only starting with five cards. And attacking here and using my Priest and also using my Liar. And that means that it's the end of the road already. And that means I, I've taken game one here. It's very exciting. I've won with my Fallen Empire Ecation deck. Well, at least I haven't won the match. I've only won the first game. So uh, let's quickly go to game two and see what's going to happen there. Game number two. And uh, let's see if I can win another one. And hopefully for Enrico, he can just, I mean, he can just keep his seven. Again, he needs to take a mulligan. I, that's not nice. You know what? You just want to have a fair game. You just want to have seven against seven. But hey, that's, uh, it happens sometimes. Let's see. At least he gets to keep this one. Doesn't have to do a double mulligan uh, like in game number one. And our, starting here with a plateau into a Tundra Wolves. So a 1 1 first striker. And I'm starting with an Ecation Store. And that's actually the save lands from Fallen Empires. You have this whole um, series of lands that they come into play tap. During your upkeep, you can put a store counter on them. And then when you untap them, you can tap them for X mana. And that equals the amount of store counter. So now you see one store counter on them. Or actually, you can choose how many store counters you want to take off. Um, but I think against an aggressive deck, it's not the best opener. And there's, wow, look at that, a giant growth and a lightning bolt. I'm already on 10 and this is, I'm going into my third turn here. I'm on 10 life. I mean, wow. At least I'm playing an Ecation Infantry. I can give it first strike with one mana and then kind of trade it off for the Tudor Wolves. I guess that's something. But this is brutal. I mean, I guess this is Enrique, this is how Enrico wants his deck to work. And also having the IO pile in his deck, meaning he can even kill my infantry if he wants to. He's not doing it though. So I'm giving it first strike and I'm gonna trade it with the Tuner Wolves. And I'm on eight. Ay, 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 ay. And the, the, the problem for me is that the Kurt Ape is actually pretty big because it's got three defense. And for my deck, that's really difficult to deal with. Um, also playing my own Ioli pile or however you pronounce that card. Um, there's a Timberwolves. At least two damage here again. He still has that artifact to deal two more damage to me. I'm already on six. And he's actually gonna do that. So I'm on four, he's gonna bolt me, I'm on one. Wow. And I'm just gonna untap everything. Hopefully I can do something. I just need a lot of little soldiers for defense. Playing another one. But that's not enough. I need a blocker here. No, 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 no. I need creatures, not artifacts at this point. If the Kurt Ape would have still be a 1-1 or would have had two defense, then it's fine. I can at least use both of them to get rid of the Kurt Ape. But that's it. It's a super, super quick game. And I guess this is exactly what Enrico wants from his deck using Giant Grove and Lightning Bolt to just put a lot of pressure on your opponent and just get those creatures in for early damage, having so many one drops. And you know, Kurt Ape is just a very solid card, especially with this uh, with this matchup, because it's really difficult for me to deal with a creature that has three toughness. Okay, so uh, let's quickly continue to game number three and um, see if I can uh, find my way back and win this match. Game number three, and here we go. At least I get to start now. Let's see if I can keep my starting hand. It looks like Enrico's keeping his, and I am, but there's not a one drop. And there's his Havana Alliance. Finding an Ecation Lieutenant, we haven't seen that one. It's a 1-2 uh, a creature, and for a white and a colorless, I can give target a soldier, plus one, plus O. Oh. And there's a Sylvan Library here from Enrico, very strong card in this matchup. It's gonna give him some card advantage. Playing a Zelon Sword. 
That's not the best. You just want to see a lot of smaller creatures at the start to put some pressure on, but it's not really happening. And there we see that strong Curde began 2-3 because of that Savannah that's in play. And um, nice flavor, by the way, having Savannah and a Savannah lines on the same board on the same time. And is he going to swing with the lines? No, he's not. He's not willing to trade. And remember, with the Zeon Sword, I can pay three and tap to give target creature plus two plus O. Oh. So that's probably the reason why I'm not playing out anything else. I want to keep that Zeon Sword activation as a little combat trick. But there's a lightning bolt. Ay, 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 ay. That's bad news for me. That means it's going to swing in for four, bringing me to 16. Playing a Giant Grove, bringing me to 13. Oh, man. Are we going to see that? I mean, this reminds me of last game. And this is interesting, a Copper Tablet. He is taking a damage from the City of Brass, so he is going to 18. But that Copper Tablet is gonna give me even more pain. Playing again that two damage artifact. And I have the same problem of getting this flashback. So again, it's this Curde, because of the three defense, it's gonna be hard to take care of that. And we see Enrico taking an extra card, going to 12, playing Timberwolves. So he's got the wolves and the lions and he's attacking and I think I'm just taking care of the Savannah lines. At least that's going to give me, going to prevent two damage and it's going to give me some more time hopefully. And I'm playing out that Ecation Infantry and remember I have enough mana now to give it plus two plus oh and first strike so that means I can deal with the Kurt Ape if he attacks with it. Playing another Kurt Ape but he can, he can actually attack me in a bance and then he can divide the damage that's exactly what he's doing he's attacking in a bance and i'm gonna make it three gonna give it first strike is he going to kill his bander or is he going to kill his kurt ape he decides to kill his bander interesting i think maybe i mean but let me know in the comments below maybe i would have um chosen to to let the um to let the bander live, because banding is just such a strong mechanic. I don't think it's gonna matter much though. Attacking, having to, well, not have to block, but it's probably the best what I can do. Wow, also playing a giant growth. No, I think, I think my deck is not strong enough. Okay, this is cool, playing an Ecation Town. That's pretty funny. And it's too bad that I had to block on my infantry the turn before because banding in defense is just fantastic um you know you can if you have one band banding creature when you're the defensive player you can band all your creatures together it's, it's really cool uh, but unfortunately i think it's too little too late with the occasion town and he's playing a balance okay this is really funny <laughs> so he's <laughs> and i'm also gonna lose my cards this is brutal oh i had a hand of justice in another occasion town oh Oh no, this is not cool. I'm gonna go to one life. And this is it. Oh, there's no way. There is no way. Ay, 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 ay. Attacking me here, and that's it. I'm going down. Ecation Phalanx, another card that just, you know, it's, it's like such a high casting cost. Ecation Phalanx is one in four to cast. And I was telling him that I had Hand of Justice and Ecation Town in my opener. But I just really wanted to play those two cards out and see if I can get a Hand of Justice online. Unfortunately, Enrico's deck is a really uh, a little bit too quick to do that. Um, that's what happens. Enrico, congratulations uh, with the win. Beautiful deck like always. I really enjoy the fact that you uh, make these flavorful brews and that you say, you know what, it's a zoo deck, so I only want to put real zoo animals in my deck. Um, and then making that switch, connecting it to Greta, saying, okay, you're playing with humans, so I'm going to be the the uh, the environmental wizard. Uh, it's, it's cool. I guess the environment has one, which is not too bad. You know, I can't really be 
be bummed about that. Uh, let me know what you think about both of these decks, by the way. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing, by liking, by leaving a comment, by sharing this stuff on your socials. You probably know what to do. You can click the notification bell. That also helps for my ranking in YouTube, apparently. Um, you can help us financially. You can become a Patreon of the channel. There's probably a link popping up right now. Talking about Patreon, uh, let's go to the end scroll and let's look at the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het dus vinkertjes zomba kan zien.